uh, actually the feature is not very new. And I'll describe you um, how the click improves Linux kernel security. Uh, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Alexander Popov. I'm a Linux kernel developer and security researcher at Positive Technologies. And I'm going to talk today about the, first of all, about the mission of the kernel self-protection, which inspires my work, actually. Then I'll give the overview of StackLeak security feature, uh, which is developed by uh, JAR Security and Pax uh, specialists. I'll give credit to them. And I'll describe my goal, uh, my tactics, and uh, the current state of my work of mainlining this feature. Um, I'll describe how it works and what kernel vulnerabilities and uh, exploitation methods StackLeak really mitigates. Uh, how it works and what performance penalty does it, um, does it bring to the mainline kernel. And finally, I'll give technical details about inner working of the security feature. Um, it consists of two parts. The architecture-specific uh, code erasing the kernel stack at the end of system call and the GCC plugin uh, for compile time instrumentation of the kernel code. First of all, about kernel self-protection project. The main idea behind it is that security is beyond only fixing bugs. Um, and in addition to running safely, the kernel should fail safely in case uh, the, some bug uh, in code actually is hit. And the goal of the project is basically eliminate the bug classes and the whole methods of exploitation uh, of uh, security bugs in Linux kernel. There are uh, nice links with a lot of interesting information. The kernel self-protection uh, project wiki and the current overview of the project by one of the leaders of this project, Case Cook. What is Stack Leak? Um, it is the security feature, which is really nice, and it initially it is initially developed by Pax team. Kudos to him. Uh, the code is really awesome, and the whole idea is nice. Uh, it is. It comes as Pax Memory Stack Leak um, uh, as a part of Jar Security Pax patch, but unfortunately, this patch is now uh, private and it is closed for open source community since April this year. So the last public version of this patch is uh, for 4.9 kernel. And what is my goal according to that? I really want to bring StackLeak into the Linux kernel mainline and I'm really grateful uh, to my employer, Positive Technologies, allowing me to spend part of my working time on that task. What is my tech tactics? Um, first of all, I carefully extracted this feature from the JAR security uh, patch. It is really big. You can see that uh, there are more than 200,000 lines in it. Uh, of course, not, of, not all of them are actual code changes, but it is really big. And I extracted StackLeak feature from it and carefully learned it bit by bit. And now I'm uh, doing my job in a loop, like sending the patch to Linux kernel mailing list, get the feedback, improve the patch, serious, and send again. And it looks like it sleep, pawn, repeat, something like that. Um, what is the current state of this work? Uh, the patch series uh, version 5 from the end of October introduces stack leak feature to x86 uh, platform. Uh, and there are more than uh, almost one, 
thousand lines changed. The patch series consists of five patches. Uh, first one, it's stack leak erasing um, the kernel stack at the end of system call. It is uh, that architecture spe specific code which I mention mentioned. Uh, first one, adding GCC plugin, uh, which is responsible for uh, compile time instrumentation of the kernel code. Uh, the third one introduces uh, the test for this feature, which uh, uh, Taiho Anderson and me developed together. Um, n uh, the fourth is the option allowing to evaluate the performance penalty of Stacklick feature. And finally, update of the kernel self-protection documentation. Um, you are really welcome to join the review of this patch series. The work is currently uh, going on. Now about the security features, what it actually gives to the mainline kernel. The first one, um, StackLeak erases the kernel stack at the end of system call. And uh, hence, it reduces the information that can be revealed by some kernel stack leak bugs. Uh, please pay attention to this asterisk. Uh, not all of them, but some of them. Uh, what is actually stack leak bug in the kernel? Uh, this, diagrams, uh, this diagram shows it. Uh, we have two system calls. Uh, you can see that user space is invoking the first one uh, and the kernel st thread stack state at the end of the system calls, uh, at, the first, uh, at the end of this first system call look, looks like that. There are, let's say there are some security sensitive data uh, which is put on the kernel stack. And the second system call actually has the vulnerability, the uh, stack leak bug. What does it mean? Uh, the, information, um, the information is copied from the kernel space to the user space, but some part of, let's say, some part of a structure uh, in the kernel thread stack is not initialized. And the value that was previously uh, put at this particular address will leak to the user space where it can be analyzed. Uh, that is the kernel stack leak bug and how stack leak copes with it. At the end of this call, there is a function erased kernel stack which fills the used part of the kernel stack by the special value stack leak poison, which is minus beef. So, uh, security data, security sensitive data which was on the kernel stack now overwritten by this poison value. And even um, we have uh, this vulnerability still existing. There is some uh, not initialized part of memory which is still copied to the user space, but uh, now the attacker has only minus beef which is useless to him, for him. So it is the first feature which stack leak brings to the mainline kernel. The second one, more interesting. Um, stack leak blocks some uninitialized kernel stack variable attacks. What does it mean? Uh, and again, uh, the asterisk. Uh, I'll describe it uh, in a minute. The example of such attack uh, is very well described in the in really nice write-up by Case Cook. Uh, consider uh, learning the details. The main idea is that um, like in the previous example, uh, there is the vulnerability um, uh, and the, some memory in the kernel thread stack is not initialized. And we are, uh, as, a as an attacker, we are able to put first by a first system call, copying data from the user space to the kernel space, we are able to put 
the payload number one with some address, uh, some target address which we want to, uh, to write to, to the kernel space. Uh, put it on the kernel stack with the copy from user function. And next, we will use the vulnerability. We will prepare the payload number two, uh, which actually can um, give us uh, root priority or something like that. We'll prepare it, prepare it in the user space and copy it uh, from the user space to the kernel space. But it is copied to the address um, which value is not initialized. We control this address and this type of vulnerability um, is called uh, write primitive, arbitrary write primitive, which allows us to write this payload to the address which we previously prepared. And the third system call uh, will allow us to trigger the payload, which now payload number two, which now resides in the kernel memory and uh, it gives the attacker the ability of privilege escalation, for example. So it is a local privilege escalation exploitation. And StackLeak copes with it. It erases the kernel stack at the end of the first system call. And the payload number one with the target address, which is prepared in the user space, now overwritten by the StackLeak poison value. So payload number two, uh, again, is copied uh, from the user space to the kernel space, but the uninitialized address now is minus beef. Uh, by the way, it points to uh, the hole in the virtual memory, which is um, unused. And we have a fault writing uh, this payload to the kernel space. The kernel gives oops and the exploit process is killed. So StackLeak copes with this type of, of attack. But now about the asterisk. StackLeak doesn't help against attacks uh, which, um, which are done during one single system call. I mean, um, if the uh, payload number one is put to the kernel stack during this single system call and then exploit it, we have an arbitrary write which is not uh, blocked by erase, er, erasing the kernel stack. So, uh, and the same with uh, kernel stack leak bug. If we uh, put the security sensitive data on the kernel stack and then leak it during one single syscall, stack leak doesn't help. But uh, anyway, uh, some number of cases are mitigated. Now the third, my uh, favorite feature, which StackLeak gives us. StackLeak adds runtime detection of kernel stack depth overflow. Uh, in fact, it is effective against uh, such type of vulnerability only in combination with two other kernel um, features. Config thread info and stack and config the map stack. Both are um, introduced to the main line by Andy Lutomirsky. And I'll show how three, uh, uh, those three security features prevent kernel stack depth overflow. Let's look at the simplest case. Uh, it is described in this uh, awesome presentation by John Oberheide. And the idea is simple. The kernel stack grows down. And um, there is a security sensitive thread info structure at the bottom of the kernel stack. And if we can um, make the kernel stack grow towards it, and uh, we are able to override security sensitive fields of this structure, uh, we win. But the kernel thread info in task, config uh, thread info in task, kernel option moves the thread info structure out of the kernel stack. 
and this type of attack is becomes useless. Okay, but there is another option, uh, more complicated attack. Um, there is some thread, another thread stack or some heap uh, object next to the bottom of the kernel stack. And stack grows down again. And if we control this growth, uh, for example, we can uh, do a arbitrary recursion. We can collide with this uh, thread, uh, another thread stack or heap object and uh, again have a local privilege escalation. It is very well descri uh, described in this um, presentation again by John and also there is an awesome article by uh, Jan Horn from Project Zero where he exploits the recursion in the kernel to have a local priv privilege escalation. It's really nice. Uh, but config vmap stack and stack leak provide mitigation of such attack. Uh, config vmap stack adds so-called guard page um, next to the thread stack. And uh, when this guard page is accessed uh, during stack growth, we have a fault killing the exploit process. Uh, if uh, vmap stack is disabled, stack leak helps against uh, such kind of attack again. There is a special check which stack leak provides, uh, which is triggered, uh, which triggers the kernel oops when the th stack grows lower than special thresh threshold. So this kind of attack is mitigated again. I will show how stack leak does it. Yes, there will be a very long oops and I will show it to you and then increase the font. So, uh, I'm running the test which uh, Taiho and I developed um, and now, so you, you see a very, very, very big recursion, exhausting the kernel stack, which is finally caught by config the map stack. You can see the guard page was hit. We detected kernel stack overflow. And this very long recursion, which tried to exhaust the kernel stack. And uh, the virtual machine proceeds to leave. But there is another type of attack, the Wunderwaffe against such defense. So um, the idea is quite old. It was invented by Gail de la, de la Lue in 2005. But it was refreshed this year by a uh, Qualys research team. Uh, they posted really nice research showing how such attack can work against user space and kernel space. The main idea is um, we can allocate some memory at the kernel stack, which is, uh, this area is so big that it is, it hops over the guard page and we can write at the end of this allocated memory and clash the another thread stack or heap object uh, next to our thread stack. This uh, memory allocation happens when we have variable length array, for example, in the kernel code. And stack leak copes with it, actually. Uh, you can read the details in JR security blog. Um, the main idea, the main, the, the main point is that 
uh, this code runs before each alloca, which performs uh, allocation of the kernel stack. The, uh, and this code evaluates the size of the stack portion, which is still left. And if the stack is already exhausted, or the size of alloca um, overstep the stack bottom, we have a kernel loops killing the exploit process again. And I will show again by our test how it is done. Um, that is the code which actually does this test. So this function is called. First, we call it with a small argument. We allocate a small size at the kernel stack, and it should work. And later, um, we allocate, we try to allocate all the space which we have uh, at the kernel stack. It will hit this tri uh, trigger this bug, and we will have an oops. I will show it at the same virtual machine. So that is the small location, and it is successful, and later big one, which is caught by our check. So stack clash attack is mitigated. Both three features work together and uh, help to cope with kernel stack depth overflow. Looks really nice, but how much does it cost? Um, there, uh, that is the brief performance test on x86-64. And this first test shows us quite impressive results. So actual, I'm compiling uh, Linux kernel with Ubuntu config, having very many different modules um, enabled. And the actual time of the compilation grows only uh, less than 1% which is quite nice, but there is another test which is really not attractive. Uh, Hackbench is a tool which creates a lot of processes sending uh, messages to each other very intensively, and we see that more than 4% of overhead. So there's a lot of short system calls, a lot of short messages, and we have a really big overhead. So the main idea is the performance penalty varies depending on the workflow and workload. So before um, deploying in production, you are uh, invited to test the click and see the actual penalty which, which it introduces. Now um, prepare for the technical details. I want to tell you how it works inside. It's very interested, interesting, and I was impressed by the code of Pax team. The stack leak feature, as I mentioned, consists of two parts. Uh, the assembler code erasing the kernel stack, and the GCC plugin uh, responsible for compile time instrumentation. We can't uh, implement such a feature without uh, kernel source code modification. The stack erasing is performed by erase kernel stack function, and it works before returning uh, from the kernel space to user space, after the system call is handled. Uh, it writes the stack leak poison, which I showed on the diagram, to the used part of the kernel stack, not to all kernel stack. It would be too expensive, uh, considering performance. It writes only to the used part. And um, uh, to do so, it uses so-called lowest stack variable, which is um, updated during the system call. This variable uh, has the address um, uh, which stores the point where the kernel stack, uh, which the kernel stack reached during the system call. It is the lowest border. And the actual erasing looks like that. It is the uh, state of the kernel stack during this function. 
First, it starts from the lowest stack address and goes down to the, uh, towards stack bottom, searching for 17 uh, stack leak poison values in a row. When it finds so, uh, um, we understand that we reached the portion which is fully erased. And we move up next to the uh, toward stack pointer, writing the stack leak poison value to the kernel stack. Uh, and finally, we update the lowest stack variable to some uh, for the next system call. Now, the compile time instrumentation. As I mentioned, the lowest stack value is maintained, is updated during the system call. It is done by uh, track stack function. And this function uh, is inserted to the kernel code during the compilation only to the functions which have a big stack frame. Uh, not to have, again, uh, not to have the additional performance penalty. Only those functions uh, will actually uh, grow the stack down and only these functions which have big stack frame should call the track stack function. And second, to mitigate the uh, stack clash attack, the GCC plugin inserts check alloc uh, function, which I showed you, bef uh, before each al allocation at the kernel stack, and track stack after it, because after alloc, our stack grown down. Uh, what is GCC plugin? Uh, I have only one slide for GCC plugins, but it is a really huge topic, and you can see this wonderful, a series of wonderful presentations by Dagon uh, Navilla. The main idea is that um, the GCC plugins are loadable modules. They are not a part of the compilator, uh, compiler. They are a part of your project. And they go with the Linux kernel. They are compiled before compiling the kernel, and then the kernel itself compiled with the aid of these plugins. Uh, they reg uh, register new passes uh, at the GCC pass manager, and they provide the callbacks, which will be called during the compilation at the special uh, point uh, of time. And, whoa, whoa, that's strange. Yes. Yes. And uh, particularly, stack leak plugin. In uh, it registers two passes because uh, our goal is quite strange. Uh, we need to insert system uh, system calls, uh, function calls, which is a complex operation. Uh, but at the same time, we need a stack frame to insert function calls only to the functions with big stack frame. And this information is available at the uh, final um, part of the compilation when we have uh, the assembler code. So uh, that's why GCC, uh, stack leak GCC plugin registers two passes. First one, uh, which, is, which works with Gimpl intermediate representation uh, of the code. Uh, this representation is actually the tree describing the source, uh, source code. And at using this representation, we can insert new function calls. We, uh, the stack leak tree instrument pass, instruments every function uh, it is run against. And then later, when we have uh, the stack frame size at the last, uh, uh, at the end of the compilation, we remove uh, the inserted calls from the functions with a small stack frame. Uh, this, uh, the intermediate representation which is used at the uh, end of the compilation is called RTL, which is uh, 
runtime uh, uh, runtime translation layout, uh, which is the um, representation. Oh, sorry, registered uh, translation layout, which is the actual assembler code, um, and having the stack frame size, we have uh, such numbers. Um, only two, less than three percent of functions are actually instrumented. Um, for x86 dev config kernel, uh, I ran a redelf utility against VAM Linux uh, binary and uh, there are 45,000 of functions in it. And uh, StackLeak instrumented only three, less than 3% of, of it, and that is why StackLeak is so fast. So uh, 36 check alloc calls are inserted. We have uh, 36 um, stack allocations in the Linux kernel, and more than 1,000 uh, track stack calls are inserted, but it is the uh, 42,000 minus 41,000 calls, which actually uh, uh, are left at the VM Linux uh, binary. My final propaganda. Um, the main idea that bring, uh, which drives me is that we are the Linux kernel community. And all these weird devices which run Linux, uh, including servers, laptops, PLCs, lasers, and so on, run our favorite operating system. So we are able to put some effort in security of Linux kernel. So let's do it. I'm done. Ready for your questions. Okay. No. Thank you for the interesting talk. Uh, you mentioned that you use ASM to erase the stack. Uh, which architects do you support except x66? Um, once again, please. Uh, you mentioned you use ASM to erase the stack afterwards. Yes. Yes. Uh, which architectures do you support? Arcs? Uh, Arcs. Currently, is, it is x86 and, and uh, uh, Laura Abbott, uh, one of the developers of ARM, uh, decided to help with introducing stack raising to ARM. Uh -huh. So it is, it is currently developed. Uh, which is less to the second question. How does mail lists respond to a patch? Uh, it is uh, the fifth version. Uh, they didn't bear me uh, <coughs> at the first time. So uh -huh. maybe it, it will finally find the way to the main line. I really hope so. Okay, and final one. Uh, will you do the client instrumentation pass or it's or GCC only? Uh, it should be done, really. Uh, people say that uh, Clang plugins are much easier and more clear than GCC plugins. So uh, no problem with that. Uh, the the StackLeak GCC plugin can be implemented for Clang and have feature parity. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, next question. Thank you for the talk. My question is uh, pretty simple. When you saw, uh, when you showed us the protection of uh, kernel stack, is it right that uh, kernel stack allocated not in the same place uh, where user stack that called that system call? Of because course. else there it looks like we put data over user space that uh, seems wrong. Uh, once again, uh, there is Yeah. Uh, there is a special API from, for doing it, copy from user. So uh, during the system call handling, the kernel space code is able to work with user space memory. And this primitive allows to copy 
the data from the user space to the kernel space. It is. I'm legal. more asking not about the general stuff, but about the location of kernel stack, uh, the, where the execution of system. You falls have an uh, automatic local variable. It is. It resides at the kernel stack. You just copy to this variable, and the data is at the kernel stack. So. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, please hold on. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on that. The question I have is, where is the kernel stack actually located in memory? In the kernel space memory. So it is allocated by body allocator. Uh, several pages, for example, for x86, it is uh, 16 kilobytes allocated by body allocator. And uh, we switch to this kernel stack during uh, the entry code to the system call. Okay, uh, thank you. More questions? Okay, Tim. Um, so, do you have other ideas for other hardening techniques in the kernel besides stack week? So, stack week is good. Uh, maybe I'm biased, but uh, <laughs> uh, is, is there other, other areas of work that after this you'd be interested in working on? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it is, it is worth to s look at the JAR security patch deeper. Uh, I'm really interested in self-protection techniques which are helpful po for virtualization. For example, um, w which can be useful for QEMU KVM um, bundle. And so I really, if, um, Stack leak will will succeed. I want to proceed with this work. Um, I'm not sure whether it will be in my working time, but anyway, um, the JAR security patch is brilliant. Of course, it is one single very huge amount of diff, uh, and it is becoming older and older because it is 4.9. But anyway, the ideas behind it are brilliant and we as a community we should really use it now it is private but anyway the ideas are quite old stackleek was developed at 2012 so five five years ago but it's still not in the main line and it didn't really change a lot during these five years so i guess uh, the ideas we are, uh, which are already in the JAR security patch are uh, quite full and ready to be deployed to the main line and we can uh, get profit out of it. Okay, the, thank you. Uh, next question. Okay. Thank you for your talk. So uh, the question is, if these ideas in, in, in this patch are so great, did somebody took an effort, take an effort and analyze them separately as a document so people would not have to go through this uh, huge amount of code? Because you kind of set up a good propaganda, but uh, if there is no documentation describing what needs to be done and what's done, then uh, the entry threshold is, is huge. Yes, okay. that's it. Um, first, I showed the information about kernel self-protection project. And um, it has really nice wiki, which uh, has the list of the features which are currently in our to-do list. And uh, those features are very well described. And um, every, f every feature has the list of the vulnerabilities uh, which can be mitigated by it. So there is a list of vulnerabilities and there is a list of features and they uh, are connected to each other. So, and moreover, um, my patch is uh, updating the self-protection documentation in the kernel so source code. It already has some nice overview of the 
um, of the whole uh, has the whole picture of the kernel self protection oh, and uh, this picture of course has some missing piece, pieces and we can bring we can uh, take the ideas from JR security patch we can come up with new ideas but anyway the whole picture is already available for us uh, in the kernel documentation the kernel self protection project and please uh, really uh, look through the case cooks slides they're really nice showing the current status uh, showing uh, showing our next goals and uh, listing the people which are currently involved in this uh, so there are a lot of information that's great thank you yeah, I just want to remind you that the presentation is available on the website uh, and uh, contains a lot of uh, very useful links. Uh, next question. Uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, my question is uh, where we can uh, find uh, code examples uh, from your demo? Uh, At the moment, uh, it is, it I'm is seeing just a uh, presentation. It is uh, this one. So uh, you can uh, look at the patch series. Uh, so the third patch, which we developed with Taiho Anderson, is the actually actually the code which I showed you. Okay, got so it. So you just run the the kernel test and have the oops catching. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Sure. So uh, how much architecture specific stuff is in this patch? Uh, not so much really. Um, but first of all, stack erasing, of course. So uh, as I showed, you start from the lowest stack, search for the poison, and then go up till the stack pointer, erasing the kernel stack. But um, GCC plugin, modifying the kernel uh, code, mm -hmm. maybe may be architecture specific too. So, um, of course, the intermediate representation, Gimple, for example, it is language agnostic. Mm -hmm. you, uh, it is the same for all languages. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there can be some particular um, pitfalls about that. So it should be really carefully tested because this patch actually touches the really core code in the Linux kernel. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be that difficult to port it to different architectures. Yes, but uh, uh, it takes time to test it properly. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Actually, it's more a suggestion. Like, uh, if you want to port in more architectures and wondering how you will test it, uh, I suggest you look at Project MK Root. Uh, it's made by Rob Landley. The, what he does, he builds a Linux from scratch. We uh, have scripts for that. For the, all the major architectures that Linux supports and Camel supports. So you can actually run this thing on, I don't know, anything like MIPS, Microblaze, whatever. whatever. Uh, I can say that uh, the code uh, which introduces... And if, if, if you add the support so you can easily test it and regress test it. Mm -hmm. I mean about that. So, uh, and it actually was built as a big uh, regression test suite from mm -hmm. the architecture that actually Linux supports by now. Um, yeah. So in that case, if you're wondering, did you break something else elsewhere? It's kind of a good thing instrument to try to test it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually wanted to add that this test um, looks at the kernel stack and uh, reviews whether the kernel stack is properly erased. So it not only uh, checks that uh, the stack depth overflow is caught, but uh, it also goes through the kernel stack, searching for the poison, and checking that the kernel stack till the bottom of it is erased, is written by this poison. So uh, this test should be run uh, periodically to be sure that uh, nothing uh, nothing broke okay uh, any more questions uh, 
in this case, uh, just a question I have a you. question. Uh, so, uh, so actually, several small questions. Uh, so basically, you mentioned that for real life example like kernel building, um, this page doesn't have any um, measurable performance degradation, right? And for extreme cases like uh, Hackbench, where you have a lot of syscalls, you get something like 5%. Uh, did you do any other kind of real life, non-synthetic tests? Um, no, I used, in addition, I tried um, Testbench, uh, another testing suite, and it didn't show any degradation once again, as I understood. Uh, we need some mm, work uh, workload which runs a lot of system calls intensively. Mm, actually, maybe running Nginx with some load would show such performance. But um, ah, and I will add that. I added this uh, this feature allowing to evaluate the performance penalty. Uh, it uh, adds a special file at proc file system, which allows you for every task, uh, for every pro process in the system, it shows you the current lowest stack and uh, value and the value of the lowest stack from the previous call. So the lower the value is. Uh, the more stack was exhausted. Mm -hmm. And uh, using this value, you can uh, see whether the system call which was caught uh, involved a b a s some big work on, the uh, work on the kernel stack. So there are uh, measures to have more precise performance uh, statistics, but currently my first goal is to have it and the, the main line, uh, and I really hope, uh, currently uh, the discussion uh, with, uh, currently uh, the discussion with x86 maintainers in the process, and if they are happy, it will get to the staged. Track. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the second question is also related performance. So if I got it right, you do a two-phase approach for instrumentation, right? You first instrument everything and then you remove stuff which yes. should not be uh, instrumented and that's pretty much all of it, right? Uh, like 98%, right? Uh, but you still do the first 97. phase. 97. Maybe 97, okay. Uh -huh. uh, does it have any measurable uh, impact on the compile time of the kernel? Um. I didn't measure it, but uh, my feelings didn't sh show any difference. So, of course, the plugin is compiled before the actual kernel compilation, but it is seconds on this laptop, maybe less than one second. Okay, uh, maybe the final one. Uh, any particular reason uh, about picking that uh, beef poisoning value, or it's kind of pretty random? Mm, uh, no, uh, first of all, uh, the array's kernel stack uh, searches for the poison value, uh, not, uh, not to erase the whole stack, and it should be fixed. And uh, moreover, uh, this minus beef uh, points to the unused hole at the end of the virtual address space. And every access to this address will give you a fault. So the, uh, that arbitrary write which I showed you uh, hit uh, this unused hole and the attack is mitigated. But if we choose it randomly, we can shoot randomly anywhere. <laughs> it would not be a good idea. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, more questions and comments? Okay, in this case, question to you. Which one, uh, which one, uh, what's the question uh, is the best? I guess uh, the question about the information about self-protection initiative uh, uh, by this man. It. it was really ask it, uh, uh, Who asked it, uh, the, this question? Uh, you, I guess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so for, for, for Kamdali MC, okay. Thanks yeah, for yeah, your yeah, attention. Yeah. <laughs>
Thanks for your attention. Thank you.